slides. So brackets. So the first example we're going to do is save as alignment of HTML. So well, let's have a section. With the idea of the G1. So let's show you what's typing, for example, the there are examples. And so the, let's say this is going to be the H2 to order now. And then let's create our paragraphs containing the images. Source is equal to images and then computer.gif. We're only going to do the one that is aligned. You saw on the slide what it would look like if it's not aligned, right? So we'll just do the, the Aligned version. Then the next one is going to be. Do you prefer that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's also give it a alt actually. Of computer. And let's give it web which is the data HTML. Okay. Let me see if I can, maybe if I'm doing this a little small. So I'm not doing, doing the proper indentation since I, I'm, my font is too large, but we should. Okay, the next one is going to be um, image source is equal to Images slash telephone dot gif and alt equals home as your image tag and then put some number here. And then finally, tax. Images tax.
So here's what we have right now. Let's go in the head of the document and add some styling. Alright, so we're going to have PG1 was the name of the ID that contains the section ID uh, and then the image within the section and then we're going to have vertical align, middle and margin right and pixels. And this is what we want. That's that's much better. Does everyone get this working? So there are other values for the vertical line, as you can see. Maybe you can just try it out since you're playing with this right now. Although most commonly you'll be using the middle. So this is bottom. Right. Next, shall we float an image? Do the float example. All right, are you ready? So close this. Yes, we can just continue here. So let's get out of the section with the first example. And then inside the body tag, let's add. Um, so we want an H, you want a paragraph, an image. Going to be the student's image, so student of JPEG. Students width. So the width is going to be equal to. 192 
in the height 128. That must be in the paragraph. No, it's outside. So we want to add some warm ipsum to the paragraphs. So um, I just thought that uh, I'm going to add all the elements and then we're going to go get some warm ipsum or thickened ipsum and then add it. Okay, so we have one paragraph, one image. And then we have, after the image, we have a UL. Inside the UL, we have PLIs. And then we have another paragraph with the ID of Last. And now, um, when you're ready, go ahead and uh, let's let's grab some lorem ipsum to add to our paragraph and our list items. So I'm actually going to use kit and ipsum. And also, do you you probably know about hipster ipsum? Yes. Hmm? Of course you do. Okay. So use whichever one you want. So right now, this is what everything is sequential, right? And then we need to add our CSS, including the floating, so we can demonstrate here floating image. All right, and so let's add the style. Let's add to the style. We already have a style here. Um, an image. So let's see. Just go ahead and delete the vertical image right now, style, since I'm just adding to the same, we added to the same file, but that's a different example. So one way we can do this is just delete the style for the vertical line image. And now image, uh, okay, let's see. Okay, actually the best, let's just add an ID to our image. That's probably the best, the easiest way to do this. So the students is going to have an idea of students because we do have three, four other images. All right. So add an ID to the students image. And then you can select students. Hold left. Margin top and pixels. Margin bottom and pixels. And the uh, idea of last here left.
to add some uh, styling to our UL or list items. But, so it's folding it. Let's just clear, give it some space between the image and the, and the list item. All right. So get us in sequence here. So UL. Line. Let's just do this. I'm just trying to do it as possible. Um, margin dash top point six m margin dash left two hundred and ten pixels and the next item. Margin top point three M margin left point five M. Let's see this the That's the example that we wanted to illustrate. So fold the image to the left, the other elements follow after it, except if you clear, then it doesn't follow anymore. So maybe it's worthwhile to take out the, I mean, I think it's pretty clear, but if we take out the clear bolt or clear left, then it's going to come after the previous elements, right? Is this all clear? Okay. Yeah, sure. So let me just add this back here. Um, do you want to look at the CSS or HTML? CSS. I think the next example we're going to do is the thumbnails. I, I learned to stitch my own green tea in cold water overnight. Yeah. But this is good to get it to you. It's so delicious. It's a probiotic. Just need more tea. A lot of coffee. A lot of coffee since 4 a.m. Yeah. Maybe one more and then I'll take a break. 
That's awesome. I've been telling other students, suggesting to them to do the same. Look at it on their own computer. Yeah, that's useful. Yeah. Is that a problem? Yeah. Is it the way you can fix it though? So let's let's start anyway on the thumbnails example. So I think it's better to start a new file altogether. This is becoming a bit messy. So let's close this example. And uh, let me double check our form. Okay. We're going to start a new file, which is going to be our example with the thumbnails. So new. You can save as, make sure to save it in the folder again, one folder up from images so we can use the images, right? Um, save it as thumbnails.html. So let's add our HTML. Okay, so just add a section. Okay. The courses. Paragraph. We're going to put the links, all of the links, all the anchor tags inside the paragraph. So a a draft is equal to oh. We're going to have to create some files, but that's okay. P, uh, P1.html. Shouldn't be too bad. Thank you. And then uh, image. Source is equal to. It's also going to be in the images folder, in the thumbnails folder, and then thumbnail T1. The JPEG of is equal to let's say T1 or that's not very really, very meaningful. Of course one. Call the image source and call the anchor. We 
can let's let's make sure make sure this looks good and then we can just copy it a couple more times to have let's say four thumbnails. All right, so I think that's fine. So copy this, paste, paste maybe three more times. We're going to have three thumbnails. Sorry, four thumbnails. And then it's going to be very similar. The second is going to go to p2.html. The thumbnail is going to be T2. And then three. And four. So the basic idea here is that when you click on the link, it's going to take you to the page which should have a bigger image. And we can create at least one such file. So this is the large version here. So what we can do is save. So the thumbnail to the HTML, let's save as p1.html. And then just so we know where we are, we're going to say page one. And we're going to display the image here. So to do so, we're going to, on T1, not on the thumbnails page, just let's delete everything here and we're just going to add the larger size image inside the section. Image source is equal to images p1. What did I forget to put off here? There we go. So I think I was telling you to be careful when I just destroyed my thumbnails. Well, you got it going to pew. Give me one second here. Hopefully you didn't do what I did. Second, I need to restore something here.
need to put a closing angle bracket at the beginning of your A. All right, so here is the basic example in any case. Um, and the idea being is when you click on your thumbnail, it's going to all do the large image in a page. Any questions or comments? It's been a long day. I'm just really getting very slow. <laughs> um, okay, so if you got this working, then it's time to take a short break. 10 minutes or so, maybe less, so we can end sooner. And then when we come back, we're going to do, we have two more to do. We have the rollover, I should say, the rollover, the Fabicon, and the image map. Well, I did erase it because it was not intentional. The idea was to have save a, save a copy of the thumbnail HTML and then um, make some changes. So in your QM, whatever name you file, then you just need to... The only thing you're going to have in your T1 is going to be the image, display the image. So that looks like it has more. So um, go ahead and erase the anchor in front of it. Yeah. We just want the image source, which will point to um, not the thumbnail, but the actual image. So it's going to point to images <coughs> slash T1, the corresponding is okay. Uh, but it's not in thumbnail, it's in images, so I believe the directory name. <coughs> oh, okay, got it. So I think that's what okay, yeah, I did. And then you can do the same, except now you hit T1. Yeah. Okay. I think we had to figure this out by accident in 110 and 120. Oh, this basic concept of like how to link an image to a place. It would have been nice to have this information two quarters ago. It would have been nice to have this information two quarters ago. Uh, 
Right now, it looks like they're not making a compressed file, so it's not going to be the right option. It's just like extract files. So, if you get the one, it's actually going to zip. This one is already in zip. Yeah. Double click to make sure. Okay. There is the right one. So, I click on here. And seven zip. And now it's going to say extract files. Wow. Horses all left in this computer. Yeah, horses all left in this computer. It's all horse stuff. Are you okay with the uh, thumbnails? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on then. I guess Jen is not here. Continue on here in a moment. <coughs> is everyone very tired or why is everyone? Well, Star is not tired. Uh, it's very happy. Everyone else. <laughs> I feel like the class is a is very quiet. Sorry, Except for starting myself. No? Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have discussion. Okay, now that Jen is back, let's see what else we can. Do. <clears throat> we don't have out there all over. <clears throat> so 
So uh, let's do a new file, I guess. New file. Save as. over the HTML. This will be like so. In the body, we are going to have uh, an H one put to the body. This again, courses. And then we're going to give a paragraph with the ID of image one. And uh, the rest of it is going to be the CSS. <clears throat> Add a few more styles here. So we, we let's let's do a, a width, the body. Five hundred pixels. Margin. Oh, I'm reminded. Um, I don't know if I told everyone or if everyone saw, but last time Jen posted the tool that you can use to calculate the conversion between uh, pixels and relative units of measure. So if you want to use it, just look under discussions on Canvas. Okay. All right. So margin one and auto, um, and then image one. Hashtag image one for the ID. And so we're going to use the background image. Did I misspell something? Is this okay? Background image URL images slash P1. The JPEG. <clears throat> and the width, 434 pixels, the height, 312 pixels. And finally, image on hover. Background image. URL. Images. P2.jpg. CSS role. Said you use the Game of Thrones to make one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, with the width and height, can you use percentages or do you want pixels when it comes to images? Just make a. You can. Um, 
So with an image, you usually want to set the, for the larger size, you can use the fixed measures. And generally, we don't really do a lot of this kind of manipulation with images when we get to smaller sizes. And in fact, sometimes we don't even have the images. So this is not something you'll be doing as you go down in the screen size, right? Because we remove anything non-essential and the rollover is not necessarily an essential component. But you could, you can set relative uh, units of measure to an image if you wanted to as well. So is it supposed to be repeating? And if not, no, where did I miss? Huh. Yeah, there's so little here, let's see. Yeah, there's not much going on at all. Is your um I'm sure there's a way. Oh yeah, here. PX, not PC. Oh. So if you left this as it is, but you made the image responsive, like on a phone, obviously you can't hover. And so it would just show the image. You, could, you wouldn't have to do something like an immediate query to have it not hover, right? Well, normally you do things to you, you. Normally, if you go down in the size, you actually do what you do is you create the image to be 100%. Right. And that's what you do. So, so you, you wouldn't have to necessarily change the hover because it's, you're not going to hover. Right. Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's, that's how we approach right. it. Just make the image to take up the call space. space. Yeah. All right. So that's the rollover. No. And let's see what else we have. We have the Favicon and the image map. Are you going to make the next band Fabicon? Did that work? Okay, play next band Fabicon. Fabicon. That sounds like a good character. It does. Fabicon, sign up. See us guys. The latest character. The first one. <laughs> All right, so let's make, let's go ahead and make a Favicon. We can put it anywhere, I guess we'll put it here. So to make a Favicon, we need to go find a tool. That's not the one. All right, this is the same. So I like the Favicon generator.org. And then you choose an image and then you upload it and then you create your Favicon. So I guess we can choose one of these horses. <coughs> so just pick up one of the images here. I'm going to pick the horse logo, but it shouldn't really matter. And then create Favicon. The one we want is the 16 by 16, but I'll just... And then download the generated Favicon. So because we selected multiple, it's a zip file since there is not just one in there. It created for different formats, which was unnecessary, but we just did it. So I'll save it to the desktop. Okay. 
is called the 16 by 16. Yeah, file. original 16 by 16. And then extract files. And so we have many more than we need. But let's pick the one 16 by 16 from that from the folder. And then we'll put it in our images folder. Uh, probably, but I just wanted to, to create one so we can just replace it with the one we just created. I'm trying to find, I'm having a hard time finding the download link. Um, you uh, the download, you hit download, Chris, click on the download button, so right here. Oh, oh, I see. I didn't realize that was hot text. Yeah, actually, we wanted the ICO, and this gave us a PNG. Um, I think it has to be ICO to for this to work. So maybe it looks like there's already a uh, yeah, but I wanted to generate one. Oh okay. So uh, sorry, but can we go back to the let's create another five icon and we'll just create the 16 by 16, okay? Because we want the one with the ICO extension. So I'll go ahead and choose the file again. <coughs> And then generate only 16 by 16 favicon. All right, and now download it. And you can replace what we already have, probably two now, but we can just replace the one that was there in the images folder. Okay, and there it is. And now let's go to our, so after you saved it successfully, go to the one of your HTML pages, and then in the head, we're going to add link, rail equals, shortcut icon, href equals images favicon and sure enough there it is So it's neat you can create favicons from your own images, right? Whatever makes sense for your project. Okay, where does this link go? Okay, Stoggy, did I put this in the wrong spot? Where is this guy? Um, the, head in the head. You don't have a head there. Oh, yeah, okay. It, it has to go in the head, so that looks like the right place. <coughs> it's a link. So. It is not. Enjoying that. So maybe it's not finding the icon? Is the favicon there? Well, it should be in the images of this here, yeah? But let's double check. <laughs> so the one you have here looks like it's the right one, but it's not the one you just created. It should have been replaced. It doesn't look like it. Okay, I will. So um, I will grab it again. It doesn't save it there by default, so if you don't want it to get to them, yeah. Or I put it one. Well, I don't know where it is. Oh, it's in three instead of five. Okay, that's the problem. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Are we okay with the Tadecon? So this would be like what kind of music would be like? Um, heavy metal or what? It's just all 70 <laughs> Um So the image map, the W3 school is actually, you know, has a that tutorial about it. So let's go ahead and take a look here before we do our own. Right, so an image map. So try it yourself. So here is a, an image map where the mercury, oh, um, I guess the mercury and the all the planets, in fact, are made into hot spots on the image map. So if you click on here, it's going to take you somewhere, and then Mercury. And so th this is the idea. You can see how when you're in a certain place on the image, Right here, the cursor stays as a pointer and nothing is happening. But if you hover over an area that has been specified with its coordinates, then the cursor changes. And if you click here, it's going to take you somewhere. And if you click on a different hotspot, it's going to take you elsewhere. So this is what the image map is. So client side image map with the clickable areas. <laughs> Is it kind of weird to share? Yeah. Ours is much better. Our example is much better. We have two parts of Washington yeah. State and then you can go to Maybe. Yeah, we'll do that. I was just going over the uh, tutorial here real quick. So, um, all right, we're going to go with the rectangular shape, which has the least amount of coordinates. Now, to get the coordinates, so we're going to use the Washington divided map. We have to we actually have to figure out how to get those coordinates and what you probably should know how we could do that, right? Any suggestions? I was thinking you could do the, um, you know how the browser has the developer tool, like if you scroll in. That's what I was going to say. That's what you was going to say too? That's what I was going to say. So, I'm not sure if this works because we need to have it relative to the, not just the size of the image itself, but it has to be relative to the window. 
So could you get this from here, you think? Page. So place it in a page first. Well, I know when you scroll in and back and forth, when you expand and contract the browser window, it'll show you the cord. It'll show you. Uh, well, this might work, and maybe we can investigate. But what I traditionally have done is uh, to use Photoshop. Because if you go into Photoshop, it will give you the coordinates. So this would be one way to do this. There are online tools too. And I bet they're online tools. It's a lot easier. Dreamweaver actually has a good tool. Online or on Dreamweaver? I know. Dreamweaver. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to go with Photoshop. Well, yeah, that's how you do it. So you should go Photoshop. Yeah, okay, I'm going to Photoshop. And then we're going to open the image. And I don't do this very often, so I actually always forget exactly the steps, so I have to look it up. But we do need to open the image from here. So we want to open the image with the Washington State. All right. So let's see um, <coughs> if I can remember this without looking up. Here's the properties, was it? This is CS, which one is it? Six, five? It's CC. CC six? Uh, 2015. So, or CC 15. Okay. most updated one either. It's sort of a weird in-betweener guy. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. Um, well, before the info, you have to go to File, sorry, to Edit, Preferences, Units. And the units have, you have to change it if it's in, uh, in interest to pixels. So that's step one. And then after that, Window, Info, and that should show us the coordinates. And we know that we started always at zero, 00 here in the top left corner. Window what? Info. And we need we need the coordinates for 
the x and y coordinates. So each cor each set has two values, the x and the y. And maybe we can write them down. So we can use them shortly here. So um, let's say we want we want to make a rectangle of the um, I guess that's not Washington. So maybe from 36 and zero. <coughs> And um, one twenty two and thirty two. And then for the lower one, we could make a polygon, but I'll just make a rectangle. So with a rectangle, let's say we start at forty. In 44 and down to 125 and 65. Does this make sense? But yes, right? So each point has two coordinates, right? You have to have an X and Y coordinate in the um, in the, for the upper left and then for the lower one. In the coordinate system. All right. So we armed with this information. Now let's create our. Are we okay to move on? Yes. Are we doing it in the rollover or are we starting a new document? Um, we can, I guess, do it in the rollover to save a little time. So, um, let's just after the image, after our course, we're going to add a, a, a paragraph. All right, so continue on in the rollover of HTML. Add a paragraph. It is going to contain our image map, and then we're going to have image sort is equal to images Washington divided dot gif. Well, this is all good. Just a second. Image source is Washington divided. And use map for. Okay, actually, this is all good. And then next, we're going to have a map element with name equal Washington. And then inside the map, we're going to have our areas.
href is going to equal to we we let, let's just put a hashtag for now and then we're going to get some external link to link to something <coughs> shape is going to equal to a rectangle and coordinates are going to equal to Thirty-six is zero. Thirty-six comma zero comma one twenty-two and thirty-two. So these are two sets: the x and the y for the upper left, and the x and the y for the lower right of the rectangle. And so, still in the area, Alt is going to go to Northern Washington. And title Northern Washington. Right. So this is the first area of our image map. And we have a second area. HREF is going to be full too. We're going to put some link here. And then the same thing, shape, rectangle, and then coordinates, 40, 44, 125, and 65. Hold. <coughs> walk, Washington. The title of the title actually will get displayed Southern <coughs> Washington. Right. It's our map called our paragraph. So now, as we expect here, if you hover over, we still get to add the link, but you can see that when you're, when the cursor gets in the rectangle area we created, it's changing shape, right? And now we just need to, to instead of linking to the current page, link it to something else. So um, one thing we can do is we can even, normally you don't go, we can, let's see here. We can just go for, Northern Washington parks. Put the link to that. So I'm going to add the link for Northern Washington to the Northern Washington parks and Southern Washington parks. And I think maybe it goes to the same. I don't know if it goes to, it looks like it's a different map. All right. So I'll try this again. <clears throat> okay, and now the top part of the map is the, the image map is going to Northern Washington State and the bottom two. Southern Washington State. And that's not, you know, that's pretty useful. I'll think, I'll think you can make a use of something like that in the future. And this is the example of the image maps. Can you post a link to the tutorial you used for that onto the discussions or something? A tutorial for what? Uh, for the image maps that you referenced. Okay, uh, this was, I, I can do that. It wasn't actually as good as I remember, but I'll, I'll post one right now. Yeah. So, I believe you, but yeah, your, uh, your stream cut out some okay. time ago. You missed all the good stuff. So, um, all right, I'll do this right now. Hmm. 
So is the video not going? It is not going. It doesn't appear to have completely dropped you. Yeah, it's still sh sh saying sh that it's going, but it's not actually showing. Yeah. It's just you and your cat in a circle. Alright, so I'm sure of that. Thank you. And, uh, and you also saw that when you hover over, you see the title as part of the image map, right? Oh, the hover over title? Yeah, so the southern that comes from the title tab. All right. All right, so this is the last images example I have for tonight. I do have something else planned since we have another hour, really, or more than an hour. Not really. A little less than an hour. Um, but do you have any questions or comments on the image examples? Pretty easy, right? Hopefully useful for you. Had, was there something you didn't know from before? Is there any hope? Oh, yeah. Did you know all, of that, all of it, all of it is. Okay, good. That's the idea. Great. Okay, so for the last portion of the class, I'd like us to do the following exercise. And when you're done, you may go. I'd like you to spend some time uh, researching um, web development and design trends. And then you email me a list of, um, let's say, five trends you discover. And next time, I'm going to combine the list and I'll share it with you. And last time we did this was really quite fun and also a learning experience for all of us. So determine what your you know, channels of learning are and then do some research and email me Email me at Stani, probably it's a little easier for me, stanimerit.com or whichever one. And then I'll combine the list for us, share it, and we can look at it next time. And next time when we meet, uh, you can also, you will speak a little bit about each of the trends you found. So, for example, I'll tell you right now that material design was found by many students last time. What? Material design. Material. But yeah, just find what is in, what you think is relevant. And then we'll put it together and discuss next time in class. Oh, wait, so you're not talking about website design trends specifically? Yeah, so web design and development trends. Huh. So what is new? Is it ReactJS? Is I'm hearing like overtaking Angular or what's going on? Do you not just want to create an assignment so that we can just put like a link to a Google Doc or something? Yeah, I can do that. That's fine, sure. I'm happy to do that. Sorry. No, it's, totally, it's actually a good idea. Why didn't I think of this myself? So that's um, web design. Does it count if there's like a website that you've seen recently and you just are curious how they made it work? Yeah, but then you should go in and try to find out what they used, okay. and that would be the trend, right? Okay. So when you're talking about trends, like there's the kind of trends that this material design or something that you see visually on a website, but there's also things like uh, that flex box, which I'm kind of curious about. So that's like a, is that, would that be grouped under the whole, what you're, the, the term? Yes, so okay. it's pretty open-ended. Okay. It could be also a development or design okay. or something that you're interested in and you want to learn more. Right? Okay. 
So I, either of these work, and then though it's going to be on you next time to tell us a little bit about it. Okay. okay. So I'm saying please submit the Google Doc link for five web trends based on your research. They can be in any in the area of web design, development, or general okay. web trends. Okay. Um, yeah. And then come to come prepared to give a brief overview to the rest of the class next on uh, on seven eleven. And it's really nice that we have a larger group, so then what we can do is we can see what's trending for our group, right? When five people submitted the same trend, then this is going to be our own trending. This is a larger group? Well, I mean, it's more than you just doing the research on your own, right? Huh. So we have the benefit of more than one group. It is more than one group. Uh, so yeah, work on this, and when you feel like you've done sufficient research, we can. Um, we're not taking another break on the week on the night at that time. Go back to the the cover. Uh, yes, because today is Thursday. Thank
Thank you. 